Whew. Hello kiddos, we are kicking it very old school with a video from my bedroom floor. Not just my bedroom floor, my childhood bedroom floor. Yeah, so I've never done a video like this before. This is like, I feel like just a general reflection on 2020 because 2020 put every single one of us through it. I would say that yeah, it was a rough year and I think is it like us and then as a family we had it pretty okay in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so I don't know a single person who's like, yeah, not been through it. So I can definitely to an extent speak for all of us being like, you know, 2020, what the fuck? But I feel like this year has had some positives. It's had overwhelming negatives, arguably. But I, I don't know, I always try and see some form of positive out of something like this. Like, do you think you're the same person you were at the beginning of it? Yeah, you can see this every year. But I don't know, I feel like this year a little bit more than usual. I don't think anyone's gonna disagree with me. If you think you're the same person though, please let me know. Like I'd be really want to know like if you feel like you didn't change this year. If I look back at every year, I feel like this is one where I changed the most. Not outwardly, I, I look I look exactly the same. If you go back to like my last Christmas vlog, I was watching and I was like, I look exactly the same. I, I feel like I don't. And I feel like I don't age, I just don't feel like I change that much. The lines on my forehead just get slightly deeper and there are slightly ever some more lines by my eyes. Why do people call them crow's feet? I like them as like little smile lines. I think they're really cute. I always look exactly the same, but I feel like this year I'm changed. And I feel like the only way I've been able to describe it's been like, 2020 has been like growing pains. Did anyone else feel like that? Like if it hadn't been a pandemic, this year genuinely would have been such a good year and like, it's so frustrating as well feeling that, being like, this year would have been so good. It would have been so good if there wasn't a pandemic. Also, it really grinds my gears when people go global pandemic. That's what pandemic means. Am I shining my dress at you? I'm wearing my Christmas dress. Yeah, 2020 growing pains. 2020 taught me a lot. It taught me a heck of a lot. So I feel like there's a lot of different ways in which, for me, I don't know, that I changed. A lot of ways that I grew. But like I said, it's growing pains, right? I think you can't grow without hurting yourself or getting a little bit hurt in the process. Like for me, this is the first year. This is the first like full year in, like since I started dating when I was 15. I haven't been single for an entire year since I started dating. I've just not done that. I've just been like a serial monogamist. And that's just been so strange. So yeah, I keep joking about having a hoe phase, but like genuinely some of the most significant personal growth I've had in a long time has happened because of it. I keep joking about it as well, getting TikTok, like that has also, cause <laughs> you all know the woman love and woman stuff and like all the bisexual content found me immediately. And I feel like it validated massive, massive parts of who I am, which then gave me the confidence to just go out and act on it like, which I'd never done before. And like, the jokes of like, being still like loving women, being scared of women because they are so pretty and stuff and then still dating men. I'm like, haha, I don't, uh, I don't feel personally attacked. I agree in that sense. And like, I've also been to therapy for now, almost an entire year. I started in February. Um, I am getting a new therapist, which is a shame, but like to have been in therapy for an entire year and I start again in January and stuff with someone else, it's just been like, really strange and like also I've always been somebody who was like wanted to be in a relationship like I said like I've been a serial monogamist I've never until now been at a point where I've been like I don't want a relationship like I've never said that and meant it like I have now I've always thought of myself as like a relationship person but I feel like maybe it's just like you know how I said in like course of love like I don't believe love is a skill but I do believe long-term relationships are a skill I feel like that is something that I am good at um, but then like choosing to like, choosing to leave a very long-term relationship, a very committed, serious relationship is, again, it, it, it puts you through it. And then like learning to just like be enough for yourself. I don't think that I'm there yet, but I feel like I'm getting there. Like think about it, you are always enough for just you, but like sometimes you don't realize that, sometimes you don't make the most of that. I feel like lockdown obviously forced me to make the most of that, being like, well, I have to love me now because there's nothing else to do. This year has been massive in terms of like love and relationships. I've been like, 
maybe you just want to lack thereof. It's been wild, guys. And like, obviously I don't share like the ins and outs of that with you. I watched Hannah Witten's video recently on her like, like relationships and stuff, because obviously she's married now, so like, maybe that's easier for her to talk about. And like, I get it because like for her, she said like, she couldn't talk about it at the time because that was like, what was her, that was her life. And that's probably how I feel now. Maybe I will tell some, <laughs> tell some of my mental stories at some point, but like, I can't now because it is my life right now. Uh, but I have quite a few that I would love to tell you, but I'm not, I don't know, mm, dear. I feel like it helps you figure out who you are though. And like, I don't like saying, like I've always been someone who knows I have a very strong like feeling of who I am and like I know very much who I am and I've never been lost in that sense at all but I feel like I've just found different parts of me to like nurture them and grow them rather than just like accept them as they are I'm like no you can grow and you can flourish and you can change and get better and like that's nice it doesn't mean that you have to like get rid of that bit of you but you can always nurture it and it doesn't have to like change it but just like evolve it and grow it like you can do that without like fundamentally changing what it is you know and if you like i did that i feel like there are little like different parts of me that were like like little seeds and stuff and they just needed a bit of water and watering 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 and nurturing and like sunlight and growth for just parts of me that i didn't give attention to and this year i was forced to um like do, you, do any of you guys feel that way are there any bits of you that you feel like you neglected until this year basically put us so like aggressively on pause in so many ways. I feel like we've all started to realize that, that like this like obsession we culturally have with like productivity is super toxic, like super, super toxic. And that we're like encouraged to have that like hustle culture, right? Where like, if you're like a side hustle thing, like, okay, you like art, aren't you gonna sell it? Like, no, but that takes all the fun out of it. And then like, it becomes another work thing rather than the thing you do to like chill and relax. Like what parts of you guys did you feel like you started to nurture this year that you wouldn't have done other years? I feel like also at home, because I've been here this, like for so long over lockdown, I got to work through a lot of my trauma um, just because I wasn't like occupied with all the new things that were happening in my life, but more than like having to focus on, because I lived every single day on repeat, it felt like Groundhog Day, right? I feel like I got in touch with my, I was gonna say soul, but it really was, you know, trauma um, and sort of understanding the concept. The big thing I learned this year is the difference between big t and little t trauma um big t trauma is like what genocide murder whatever like these big horrendous things um but little t trauma my therapist is explaining is like smaller repeated things but over time build up and like damage you um like death by a thousand paper cuts like one paper cut on its own you're like it's nothing but if it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and you see patterns and stuff then you're like oh shit this actually really hurts so that's been like an interesting thing to understand this year and I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I've learned to accept different parts of me a lot more. Also like the trauma thing that I worked through, I, I can't even like bring myself to not do that. Um, I will talk about it in a video. Um, I mean, it's my internet, I used to self-harm for a lot when I was younger and I'm in like seven, almost eight years of recovery. Um, and I would like to speak about that at some point just because not enough people do and as somebody who is very much recovered, I'd like to share that journey with you because maybe, I don't know, some of you need that encouragement or understanding that like, you know when people are like, oh, it gets better. It does get better and I want to like <laughs> explain that to you and that it's also something that as a recovery, like it takes a long time and like, no matter what you guys may be recovering from, if you guys have been through shit, um, it just takes a very, very long time. Um, there are still things for me that I see and I'm like, I've been in recovery for so long and I see it and I'm still like, I am still sometimes triggered by it. Let me know if you'd like me to talk about that because that's more, maybe something for all of you, but if you can even help or reassure one of you, then I'd be absolutely game to do that. <laughs> I feel like I will say in the little ways, the complete U-turn had a lot more fun this year. Um, I grew some balls this year is what I can tell you. Fucking hell. I became an adult this year. Like I know I would like, I turned 21, yeah, whatever. Um, well, I was already 21, been 18 for a, <laughs> been more than 18 for a long time. But I feel like this is the first time where I'm like, I am a grown ass woman and I've done stuff this year that I would never have done before. And I think it's been like a fuck it, I'm free mentality. 
and like knowing that when you do has not that it doesn't have consequences but it doesn't have the same consequences it once did and being like what is the worst that can happen um because i think in those few moments of freedom that we have especially over the summer i think the biggest thing that i've learned is to not put off the things that make you happy and i have some things i want to do in the new year that i've always thought about and i've always wanted to do but i've just never done it and l looking now i can't understand why i've never done it i think that's one of the things we're all going to take away from this i hope is that we shouldn't put off the things that we want the things that we know make us happy the things we know we enjoy because we don't know if we're going to get a chance to do them we can't to an extent guarantee that next week we will have the freedoms to go out and do the things we want to to go see the people we want to, to go love the people we want to. We don't have that guarantee in the same way that we once did. So I feel like I will never try to put those things off in my mind because you don't know. You really don't know. While that is scary, I think it just teaches us that we need to appreciate our here and now much better and not, yeah, defer things to a future we don't know that we have or not. And I think that goes for a lot of things. Like, a lot of you know that I applied for management um, MAs, even though I still wanted to do film, and instead I ended up doing my film degree that I wanted to. I can't believe that I started that this year, that that was this same year. Like, it's beyond me that that is only been happening this year, because that is such, like, a big part of my identity now. Like, you're all like, oh, you're a book channel. I'm like, I'm really not. I make movies. <laughs> my film is linked below. Please watch my term two film. I'm really proud of it. Fuck, take those risks. <laughs> Do those things that you're scared of doing because you you have, I, I don't want to say you have nothing to lose. That's not how the world works, but what is the worst that could happen? You want something, do it. If you want something, go for it. A lot of you are my age. A lot of you are like, my main view is like 18 to like, 34 which i think is really fucking sick hey fuck don't put things off for a tomorrow that you don't know if you have or not it's so dumb but it's taken me this long to like clock that you know like i started doing things that really make me happy like film school that makes me so happy like i i fucking love my friends um and it's so interesting i for so many people that i grew so so much closer to this year um new friends old friends i know obviously then there were some people that i grew further away from which sucks and I need to work on that because you know when there are some people that you just can't let go but it's just not right now like it's just not for right now and I know it is exactly the opposite of what I've just said and not to put it off um but sometimes you do need space and sometimes you just need time and that is also okay I think a lot of us we need the new year as a mental reset. I always do. I love new years for that very reason. It's about fresh slate. It's that new start. Especially because, <laughs> and the irony being that my new year's was awful. I got dumped on new year's day. I know. So my new year started off to such a good start, but my God, it's so weird that we're here after everything. But yeah, I think I made the most of the freedoms when I had them. Learn a lot about myself. <laughs> learn a lot about my sexuality in both senses. I had a lot of good sex, a lot of bad sex. <laughs> Here's the thing, no one loves the way you do and no one fucks the way you do or the way someone else does. So genuinely, when you are young and free, be fucking young and free. Make mistakes and get hurt. It is the easiest and most productive way to grow. My God, God, I got hurt so much this year. Um, last year hurt, but like in a very like, it hit in a very big and like a dull sort of way. This year was just like, ah, oh God. I encourage you to get hurt. But if you want personal growth, go out and make mistakes. That is the one thing I can say to you. And I think also being single for this entire year and like meeting new people and whatever, you know, when it's also been responsible to. But realizing that like, there is always someone else and that you shouldn't settle. And like, while I think I've got over my like, aversion to a relationship, like genuinely, if someone was like, do you want a like, relationship kind of what? That was the feeling. And while that's not like what I'm like looking for now, I feel like I'm just finding someone I want to look for someone who's like worth it. And like, I am at a point where I'm so chill and so like whatever about being just me. And I like me, so that's fine. <laughs> but she's not settling for anything less than she deserves. Join me on this transition because it's fucking great. Cause here's the thing, love really often hurts. So it may as well be for someone who's worth it. I just have to find 
set someone who is worth it. But we'll see. It can take its fucking time, it really doesn't matter. And like, just on some like practical levels, yeah, I did therapy for all of this year. I ran for all of this year. I have two kilometers to go and I've run 700K. All I asked for Christmas was sports gear because I was like, I need this. I started rock climbing, which is now like, bouldering is like my fate. I fucking love it. Getting the calluses on my hands makes me feel good about myself, which is not something I ever thought that I would say. And that makes me happy. Just identifying those things that bring you joy. Yeah, just Maria Kondo it. Like, if it doesn't bring you joy, yeet it out the window. What do you guys feel like you've learned to prioritize this year? I wanna know, tell me. I don't just want this to be my like monologue. I want, tell me, I wanna know how you guys have like dealt with this year. I wanna know how you guys felt like you've grown. I wanna feel know how like, you felt like you changed your priorities or like reevaluated, like tell me, I wanna know. Or if you don't yet, take a second to just think. Like, what are you gonna stop putting off? What are you gonna, in 2020, when we finally have a bit more freedom, more vaccines, more whatever, what are you not gonna put off? Tell me. Hold yourself accountable in my comment section. Go on, do it. Dig deep, kids, dig deep. What 2020 taught me is to not put off the things that make me happy. Now tell me, what are you not gonna put off anymore? I know exactly what I am not gonna put off anymore. I have one very, very specific thing in mind and I'm doing it in the new year. The moment all of this lockdown tier four crap is over and it is the first thing I'm running to go and do. And I'm gonna get in so much trouble for it, but I am so excited. And there's just many things that I've done this year that have helped me feel more me. And I hope you guys know where I've started to know and started to find what it is that helps you feel more like yourselves. This year has taken away a lot of identifiers for a lot of people. To an extent, it's also building up, again, who we are. That's what 2020 taught me. Growing pains. I'm an adult now, in a way that I was not a year ago. At all. I've chilled out a lot as well, which my family will really laugh at, but I genuinely have chilled out a lot as well, which is beyond me. And I think I've just let a lot of things go. And you would when life puts you through it. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it. Let me know what you guys know I'm gonna put off. My feet have gone numb because I've been sat on the floor. This year really has been growing pains. That's the only thing I can think of saying. Start thinking of your new resolutions. Like, subscribe, and all the jazz. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye. <laughs>